first of all, for your education, technical training, protection, and a lot of updates with what's going on right now with the COVID situation, go to the ppa.com website. They have loads of stuff for you there, um, highly recommended. And obviously, they bring you every other week PPA EDU Live with speaking experts. And like I said, today is a special day. We have a special guest. Uh, thank you, Mike Michalowicz, for joining us. Uh, Mike is the author of, I see a bunch of stuff behind him there. Yeah, well positioned, yeah. Well positioned. Mm -hmm. um, great ways to help your business, right? So I know the the favorite is Profit First, that the book's been around for a long time now. I know you have like over half a million sales and because it's helped that many companies and that's something certainly people should look at to help their own companies. But just by chance, and the way we got you on the show today is I know you have a book, Fix This Next, which is launching days away. You can tell mm -hmm. us about that mm -hmm. in a minute because it's a book we need to know about. Um, but it just so happened, and because I read this on, I think it was in USA Today yesterday or something, that your name, you were in USA Today. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, we need this now. Like You've been working on this book for years, and it's about recession response and about crisis response. And yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you could just like jump in. So here, here's Mike. He's great, great speaker, great businessman. I'm just going to let you jump in and start helping us because we have photographers Thanks, who need to respond to this crisis. Yeah, we, we're in need right now. So uh, what I want to do is just provide you with actionable tip after actionable tip uh, for you to not only turn your business, but actually make this perhaps the greatest opportunity of your life. And um, I do want to explain one difference between opportunity and being opportunistic before we dig in. Um, there, opportunistic is where we take advantage of someone's disadvantage. Opportunity is where you serve someone that has a need, and particularly now a new need, um, and serve them in a new way that caters to them. I think there's massive opportunity out here. Sadly, there's some uh, less scrupulous individuals that are being opportunistic, and uh, that's a call for you as a photographer to stand up and step forward to grab the opportunities. Because if we don't, uh, we, we're we allowing the less scrupulous people to take over. So uh, this is your opportunity. And uh, I actually suggest that you have a responsibility to stand up in this environment and to market and sell, but in a new way. So what I wanted to do first, and hi to Barb, I see you there uh, watching from Nashville. I was actually just down your way. Uh, right before COVID broke out and spent time with Don Miller of StoryBrand down in Nashville. Hey, Jackie, I see you also. Um, I want to introduce you to this. And uh, I'm going to hold the screen so you can do a screenshot there if you wish. This is called the business crisis trend. And it's something that I think foundationally we need to understand first to understand how businesses of all size respond to a business crisis or recession like we're experiencing now and um, where the opportunity is in the situation. Now, just as context, I am a full-time business author, but I've been a business owner ever since I graduated college. My entire adult life, I've been an entrepreneur. And so I've been through two recessions of significance. One was 2001, again, 2008. Now this is the third we're going into in 2020. There's always a trigger event. So in 2001, there was the terrorist attacks. There was the dot-com bubble. And it triggered the event of the recession, which was already a destabilized economy, something crazy happens, the economy then collapses. 2008 was the housing collapse, now we have COVID. And um, what we see is a an arc of five significant stages that businesses go through. This is very similar to uh, the five stages of grieving, um, but different from a different perspective. The first stage you'll see businesses go through is the shock stage. And uh, like everything stops, everything just halts. And if you want to equate it to uh, personal experiences, if, hopefully you've never been in a car accident, but if you're in a car accident, many people go into shock. Shock is this form of uh, not accepting what happened and, and there's this disbelief and freeze up. Well, that's what happens to many businesses in the very first stage of this market. And it causes, it says the word inaction here. By the way, I did set up a page, maybe you can't see the, the thing here, but if you Google recession response or you go to recessionresponse.com, this document, I've got 20 other documents available for you. No sign up, no nothing. You can just download it and access this. But the first stage is shock, meaning there's disbelief. And many business owners go into inaction, saying, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm just going to try to sit it out. And inaction results in the category of business collapse. Um, we can talk about how it's happening in the restaurant industry. 
Many restaurants are now going out of business because they were shocked that the way business was operating only six, seven weeks ago has stopped abruptly and their action has been inaction. Um, the next stage, which continues the downward slide in the business crisis trend, it's called desperation. And desperation is where we take massive action, but often wrong action, uncalculated action, without preparation. We just go, go, go. And uh, we saw it with the toilet paper run, right? Like all of a sudden people start running and buying toilet paper. And in the beginning, it's almost laughable. Like what are those people doing? But then it causes what's called the stampede effect. You get people going and then everyone else is like, I got to do this too. And then people start flocking uh, to buy toilet paper. And then there's a run on toilet paper. But it goes to this absurd degree. There is a person, uh, supposedly a story broke out here, a person that has a garage full of toilet paper. A garage full of toilet paper. Uh, he, this guy has 50 years of supply. His worry is not going to be if he can get access to toilet paper. It's how is he going to maintain that? Like he has to have like dehumidifiers and like control systems for his toilet paper. Um, and I know it's kind of funny and, and it sounds a little bit absurd, but it, of course you're experiencing too. There's this run on it. Well, businesses start doing the same thing. <clears throat> there's a run on uh, loans, and there's misconceptions around loans. So there's this thing called the PPP, which I'm sure you're familiar with, which is the payroll uh, loan, which is potentially forgivable. Uh, be very careful about that. Uh, it is not defined that way. There's these disaster loans uh, that are being served. But people are running for that without the consideration. Remember this. If you need a loan for a, any reason, ask yourself, what is the reason I need the loan first? Because what a loan does is bridges you or puts a Band-Aid on a wound, but we got to heal that wound and disinfect it. So what is the reason you need a loan? Because at the end of the day, a loan is a loan. And I see some businesses trying to get money now just to extend business as normal, but in two months when that loan extension runs out, now they have that loan they have to pay back plus all those expenses that they continue to incur, the business just comes to an immediate halt. So we just have to consider our action. And that's what the stage is here at the very bottom where we start seeing the curve up is the evaluation phase. My goal in our call together today, this live presentation, is doing an evaluation. An evaluation is where we consider the options we have and move on to deliver action. Now, there's a risk at evaluation. We can get what's called paralysis analysis, and we start this spin down here where we just over-consider, over-consider, and result in a form of inaction. So my goal is to give you some very specific deliberate actions you can take. If we can get our business today to deliver action, we've positioned ourselves for the upside. The upside is here. It's called surge. Uh, it comes, sometimes it's called burst, but surge. And surge is an interesting phenomenon that happens after every recession that I've experienced and studied. What happens is there becomes a boom in the economy. And the reason is, is because there is a depletion of competition. Some of your competitors are going to go out of business. They were hobbyists. They weren't really committed to the uh, activity of photography. And they're like, I, I give up and I'm done. So all of that competition fades away. Um, what's interesting also is customers, uh, there's going to be pent up demand. It's not like people are never going to want uh, photography again. They're going to want it. They're going to want it in a new way. And we're going to talk about strategies to do that too. And they want it in a new way immediately right now. But as, uh, as time goes on and there's a decreasing supply, less photographers, uh, there is that sustained demand that causes this gap. And if you can exist, if you can sustain through an economy, now you have all this opportunity to gobble up. That's why we hear historically Businesses that navigate through a recession, ones that either are started in a recession or navigate through it, inevitably are the most successful businesses. And some of the biggest brands have come out of recessions. So that's the opportunity in front of us. We just have to do it I'm right. I'm going to jump in here just one second. Yeah. Uh, we have oh, we've got over 100 people watching. Fantastic. We want to hear from you just to let everyone know. So PPADU Live, you use 30 minutes. We're going to probably run long today because this is so needed. And feel free to start putting questions down. Mike said he's going to start answering questions right through this. So don't be shy. Put them in there. We have a little extra time today. We're taking a little extra time today yeah. um, so that we can get your answers done. And the first message here is that good things can happen for, out of a recession. So let's make them happen. I'm back to you, Mike. Great. Lee, thank you for that. Yes, uh, good things can happen as long as we evaluate where we are and take deliberate action. And yeah, please do ask questions. I'm trying to monitor them as they go through, and Lee will come in also and share stuff. So our goal is to move you from evaluation, uh, out of desperation or shock, to evaluation and deliberate action and get you for the surge burst thing. First tip I want to share with you, it's called the downstream upstream, and this is how it works. Clients, historical clients, use situations like this 
uh, to justify abandoning their, pri their vendor because they were never satisfied in the first place. And I can't give you a specific percentage, but let's say it's 10%. 10% of your client base, but this is true for all, all uh, photographers, are not really thrilled with their provider for whatever reason, justified or not. But they aren't leaving that provider until there's a trigger event. Well, now that there's COVID, it's like, oh, you know what? I'm done with this photographer. And they abandon the photographer. They use it as a conscious or a subconscious uh, justification to leave. Now, say you have historically over a year, I'm just going to pick a random number, 100 clients because it's really easy math. Well, 10% would be losing 10 clients. That's downstream. And I think the mistake business owners make right now is they look and say, I lost 10 clients. How do I get those 10 clients back? What do I need to save them? And I want you to consider this. If you're losing 10%, so is the cumulative of the competition. So say cumulatively out there, there's 10,000 customers that are working with different photographers and so forth. Well, they're going to lose their 10% which frees up, you know, 10,000, 10 percent is 1,000. So 1,000 customers are being freed up. We're losing 10. Let's not look downstream. Let's look upstream. There's this whole market that now is looking for a new photographer, and they may not be buying today, but they're looking, and they're looking for someone that they know, like, and trust. This is an opportunity to position yourself. There's tremendous marketing opportunities right now. Get out there and start, when I say out there, not necessarily physically, but get out there so you can capture these customers. And you often do it through educational components, through email communications, if you have a prospect list, but you can be on YouTube posting videos, teaching um, some of the process, but really teaching the customers on the services, uh, and how services are rendered, uh, determining how to find a photographer, uh, maybe even some do-it-yourself stuff, but you want to build that know, like, and trust component. Look at the thousand coming down the stream, not the 10 going away. It's a marketing opportunity as opposed to a retention uh, opportunity necessarily. All right, we have some questions already for you. So if you could take a yep. take a quick break. The first one, this is so true, it's about anxiety, right? So yeah. feeling overwhelmed, there's the question for you. Should we be booking for the future now? Uh, are people, do I, do I feel like, you know, are people feel like I'm taking advantage of them? Yeah. A lot of anxiety so, here, so. I'm going to jump to a tool called block control that will give you a, a strategy around that. Uh, the answer is, first of all, um, we do need to sell, but we need to sell with care and candor. So what I mean is, here's an example. I got an email. I own a Chevy, uh, and I got an email from Chevy that was a 15-paragraph diatribe of how COVID is affecting the world, and Chevy's responding, and they're ready to do my oil change. And if I want to buy a new car, they can drop it off my driveway. And uh, by the end of that email, I was like disgusted by Chevy. Uh, they, it was minus one in their box. Now, the interesting thing is I'm also, I have United uh, is the local hub here. I fly United. And historically, I really don't like United. I actually don't like any airline particularly much. But United did something that was super impressive. They communicated in bite-sized pieces. They sent me an email about two weeks ago saying, um, we want you to know that um, because of COVID, a lot of loyal customers like yourself can't travel as much. We're going to give you your loyalty rewards extended for a year and a half. There's nothing you need to do. Very small. It wasn't 15 paragraphs. It was one paragraph. And it said very instantly what they're doing on my behalf. I was like, wow, that's cool. Then they emailed me a week later and it said, hey, we noticed you have a flight coming up that you didn't cancel. You probably want to cancel that. You may want to cancel that. And we want you to know if you do choose to cancel it, just click here and uh, we're going to refund you fully. So don't worry about the cost. I'm like, wow, they're actively going out and taking care of me. So here's the answer to this question. We do need to communicate with our customers more now, but you need to communicate in small, bite-sized, tangible pieces. That's the key. So it's actually increased communication frequency, but smaller pieces. First thing, if you haven't reached out to your customers, just reach out and say, hey, we want you to know we're still around. That's it. You know, I, I can't tell you how many of my vendors I haven't heard from, including, shamefully, my own photographer. I do photography. I believe in photography in a major way. Uh, my photographer comes in once you a quarter. You do a lot of pictures. <laughs> a lot of pictures. Well, and I'll tell you why. Um, when you do speaking uh, and stuff like that, the biggest mistake a lot of um, experts do is they have their favorite picture from 15 years ago. And when they go on stage and present themselves, it's like it's like their, their son was in that picture and it actually is, it forms mistrust. A higher degree of pictures, more current pictures, s sustains that trust. So I believe majorly in investing it. My photographer hasn't said boo. I love my photographer, but I'm disappointed. I don't know if what's happened to him. He could have simply said, hey, Mike, just want you know, I'm still here. If there's a way I can be of service to you, tell me how, but I don't want to bug you and distract you. That would be a powerful email there. 
Then, so do the same with your customers. If you haven't reached out, just reach out and say, we're here. Um, we know you may not need us, uh, but we want you to know that if you need us in a new way, tell us how because we want to care and protect you. That's All the right. first email. Okay. Perfect. Next question. Sorry, they're coming in here. Oh, I have tons. Um, yep. Why don't we do like one or two more questions? I want to go through specific strategies, and then we can do in batch. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll do this one. We'll take a short break, and then keep people, keep putting them in there, though. I'll save them up yeah. for Mike. So yeah. uh, sales packages, here you go. Um, are doing sales on packages a good way to rebuild your income, or should you stay in your normal prices to keep the quality of your business? I heard everyone will be doing sales, and it might hurt the industry. Yeah, so you're right. So discounting prices... Uh, is what I heard, or doing packages to reduce prices can be a big risk because what you start doing is playing a money game. Um, I'm just trying to find another thing I want to show you. But we start playing this this game where, hey, if you pay me now a big chunk of money, I will deliver service over time, which gives momentary relief in exchange for long-term agony, right? I'm getting money now, but now I have to render services over time. Discounting prices uh, are very risky repackaging your offering where you've been offering at a lower price point is a much safer bet. So whatever you've done historically, if you cut the price, um, the problem is now you've set a new standard for yourself and you've decreased profit margin. It may actually put you out of business. But if you come up with a new uh, derivative offering, uh, maybe a subset of what you used to offer, and that can be a lower price point, that's a powerful strategy. And I'm going to show you a way to do that in a second. Um, but let, let's go on with a couple of tools I want to give you rapid fire, and then we'll do some more questions. Um, also at recessionresponse.com is this document. It's all about cash flow management. And th there's a list of maybe about 30, 25 to 30 tips you can do here. But I want to give you some meaty ones right now. Um, the first thing is that we can do as photographers is to set up new financing options. You know, you can do 0% financing and you can even do 0% financing for very low cost price items. This is where you can type in, in Google 0% financing uh, services. There's companies out there. I know PayPal does it. Um, there's a couple others that will offer 0% uh, financing. So I as a customer buy something for say $500 or a $2,000 session, but now I get through that company installments and you get the full amount or an agreed upon portion of the amount. So you get the full cash up front. It gives relief to the customer. It gives you cash and uh, the customer deals with that vendor. So that's one way to do it. Um, consider things like ACH. If you've never accepted credit card, uh, that's something to consider too. Um, another strategy I want to share with you is to renegotiate terms. There's, a, there's an opportunity here. This is a little bit draconian, but there's what's called first asker advantage. First asker advantage. If you have le a lease on space or um, some other significant ongoing costs, the sooner you ask for uh, relief, the more likely you're to get it because you're the first person to ask. So I'm in a building. Um, we uh, approached our landlord six weeks ago and said, hey, we, there's a situation going on here. We all have to go remote. Uh, this may be affecting us. We'd like to ask to uh, renegotiate our terms. We're the first in our building to ask, and we got the renegotiation. The other people, tenants, I don't know, but I know it's going to be much more difficult for the landlord to satisfy that because now it's hurting his business. Here's what we did, though. We always, and I believe is always do it with integrity. So we went to our landlord and said, our revenue hasn't dropped yet, so we're not asking for a discount price. We simply have a five-year lease. Um, we don't know what the future beholds. Can we cut this down to a one-year agreement at the current price and give, the, give us the right to come back to you if we're really in crunch time? And he said, you got a deal. So now we have a shorter window that we're working with um, because we were the first to ask. So do that. Uh, another strategy I want to share with you. It's, a, it's a, again, a little bit draconian, but it's an effective method. If you have a lot of costs that are coming at you on credit cards and debit cards and your head's kind of spinning, the sense of overwhelm I heard, here's a real simple strategy. Reissue your credit cards. Call your credit card and debit card companies and say, put a cancel on my credit cards, reissue new credit cards. You're not canceling your credit card, meaning you're not canceling your credit. You're going to retain that. You're getting new cards issued, similar to if a card was stolen. But the power here is now the new cards are issued. Make sure they don't transfer over any subscriptions to your new card. Just confirm that with them. And now all the vendors that were automatically charging your credit card can't. So what are they going to do? They're going to call you and say, I can't charge your credit card. Now you can go through them linearly when you talk to them and say, oh, that's an expense I, I should be having. Please do it. Or you can catch expenses that you shouldn't have or wanted to cancel in the first place. So it's a great way to put an instant stopgap in place to protect your business uh, and, and to protect your cash flow 
and also be integral because you got to speak with each person individually. Uh, I did this. I had a gym membership for a year and a half that I was still paying for that I had no use for. Uh, I'm a little bit ashamed and embarrassed for it, but I caught it using that method by reissuance of credit cards. Um, other strategies in here. Um, I want to share with you the GL account. That's right in the accounting section. Real simple thing. With your accounting system, if you do it yourself or if you have a bookkeeper or someone helping you out, set up a new GL account. It stands for General Ledger Account. And set up an account called COVID. It's an expense account. Any expenses you incur related to the COVID response, do you need to buy new cleaning equipment to maintain, you know, new cleaning uh, solutions and supplies to maintain your equipment, to maintain your facility or your studio? If so, put that in the COVID account. So, and, and are you experiencing other costs associated with this, like remote access to, to talk with people? What other new expenses are you incurring specifically respond to COVID? Put that all in the GL account. Here's why. When, uh, when this is all over, the government may do reimbursement uh, for businesses that were affected by COVID beyond what they're doing right now. Uh, there may be insurance reimbursement. Um, so that's a way to get reimbursed because you can extract out the expense and say, here's what I incurred. Another thing is you may experience um, the desire to sell your business one day to maybe another photographer. And if you do that, you'll have to do what's called a recast, showing the historical uh, profitability and revenues of your company. And you'll have to be able to extract out COVID because it's an anomaly. If you ever want to seek a loan in the future, uh, you have to show the bank your historical financials. You can now say, here's why we had the blip down because of COVID and here's the expenses we incurred. So it's a real powerful way to, uh, to maintain loans and so forth. Another strategy, when it comes to finances, again, this is a little bit draconian, meaning extreme, but if you have to worry about the finances of yourself or the business, it's actually yourself that matters more. Maintain your credit as high as you can if you, if you have to choose between you and the company. My goal is for you to not have to be put in that position, but if you do, your credit score matters more than the business. Why? Because in the future, any loans, uh, anything you're looking to do regarding money uh, in the future is going to be judged based upon your ability to do a personal guarantee. Your personal credit is valued much more significantly than the business credit. So uh, for almost all of us, protect your personal credit if you have to choose between the two. A couple, Another tip, a couple bold moves you can do. Um, this may be an acquisition opportunity. All those photographers that are saying, you know what, we're done, those clients are now abandoned. Well, those are coming downstream, not just the, the people that are using this as a justification to leave and seek a new photographer. There's all these clients now that don't have a photographer. Reach out to other photographers and say, hey, if you're deciding to uh, close your business or move on to something different, I'd love to have a, di a dialogue with you about acquiring your business. Now, you can do a no-cost acquisition right now, which simply says, I want you go to that other, that other photographer and say, listen, I'll take on your clients. I will pay you a percentage of any revenue that I generate from them. Um, and, and that's the deal. So it's an asset acquisition. Any of the stuff that they have, their equipment or liabilities uh, is their own. And if you want to procure some equipment, you can have a conversation around that. But do an asset acquisition of the client base and pay them based upon the performance. So there's an opportunity there. Uh, another bold move I already talked about, this is a marketing opportunity. You know, it will be the photographer that owns the space right now. I talked with real estate agents yesterday, and uh, I have a real estate agents um, are, are they're full stop. You can't sell houses because you can't go in them. Um, While well, I tell these real estate agents, why not um, set up a YouTube channel where you're doing all this information about the local town? You interview the local fire chief uh, remotely. You interview uh, the, the police chief, the mayor, how the COVID response is going to start making yourself the authority for the space. Well, as photographers, we can do the same thing. You know, take photography of your community if you want to be known for your community and show through, you know, pictorially what the COVID response is for your community. Start posting those. Definitely use YouTube too. Film yourself taking pictures and show that. It's a powerful strategy. Okay, um, let's start moving on to some more specific techniques. This is one of my favorites. It's called the one step back method. And uh, what you can do here is go to recessionresponse.com if you want to download these graphics. Plus I got, I got a lot more uh, there for you. But here's the technique. Look at your final offering and rewind one step at a time. What you're gonna discover for most photography businesses, most businesses, that we actually, our final product is a deliverable of, or an accumulation of many small pieces. So let me give you an example in the restaurant space and then we can talk some strategies for photographers. Restaurants, they're shut down. What's the final deliverable for a restaurant? Delivering food to the table. 
Well, what happens one step back from that? Well, one step back is food is carried to the table. Well, that can become an offering, carry out, take out, as you know. Um, but one place really did a smart thing. They collaborated. So is there opportunities to collaborate in your new offering? There's a restaurant that teamed up with a food truck. The food truck is delivering food to neighborhoods while the former restaurant is now a cooking kitchen and getting food out there. They're seeing a revenue increase. What happens one step prior to you? Well, let's just do it through restaurants. So one step prior for a restaurant to um, doing, you know, carrying food to the table, they cook the food. Well, that's an opportunity. Why not sell your 10 most popular menu items? Why not sell uh, cooking training on those recipes? Why not actually run a cooking class where you get the community involved and charge for that? Well, what happens one step prior is the procurement of the meats and the vegetables, the raw inventory. Why not carve that up and become the blue apron for your town and deliver these to your customers and then do these cooking classes for them for a subscription fee? The opportunity exists for us. What happens one step prior? You know, I was thinking about photographers yesterday and I said, well, one step prior to a, a photo shoot is, set, is setting up the stage, the scenery, uh, the foreground and background. You know, there is massive demand right now that is underserved in setup. How many people are doing video presentations that have never done them before on Zoom and so forth? And what does their scene look like, the, the, the scenery? It's, it's horrible. It's not lit. Um, behind them is like this weird curtain thing. It's, it's disgusting. Um, my photographer, by the way, set this up. Uh, you can see he put shadowing effects and stuff like that. He told me where to position things. Um, there is a key light. There's a backfill light. All that stuff in my space because my photographer, I hired him to do this. Well, you have this opportunity. Reach out and say, listen, I can help you set up with your Zoom conferencing and presentation skills. And it's not just for speakers and stuff. This is for the entire professional community. Uh, is it's the setup so you can do that um what about uh i'm taking notes here oh right now it's the one thing that's happening at our house you know one step back is you you collate all the different pictures you've taken well why not offer that as something why not go pe through people's historical photographs um right now because there's so much time at home we've pulled out all these photographs like the traditional print photographs from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s and uh we're starting to scan them in you know, I'm, I'm surprised, uh, at least my photographer hasn't, but this is an opportunity. Why not offering services where you can, um, people can ship you their, their photographs and you can scan them or they can scan themselves and you can edit them. Maybe you can help them form um, some other kind of presentation around it. Um, why not um, move into spaces, you know, you can keep going back. Why not move into spaces where uh, there's a, a surging need? So um, I have one photographer I was talking with who uh, sadly funerals never stop regardless of recession or not, who's doing memorial photography, uh, memorial edits. He was taking their best portraits now and uh, making memorials out of it. One of the techniques he does, which he's able to triple his prices for, which is so freaking smart, he calls it uh, story um, integration. And what he does is when you see a picture of someone with their, their clothing on, in the, the lines of the clothing, the, the uh, collar and so forth, he actually with micro um, print embeds their story in there. So when you see the photograph that's being distributed around, um, you wouldn't know the story, but if you zoom in and zoom in, then you start seeing the story embedded in the clothing. Real interesting spin on that. It's a huge opportunity uh, for photographers like yourself. Okay. Um, right, I want to continue on, on questions. I, I know you've got, you, Go. I, I was waiting on questions. But actually, uh, Barb Jones Photography, I'm going to throw this up because she just commented on exactly what you were saying, yeah. which is she thought about uh, offering half price to previous clients on editing and delivering new photos from previous work. Mm -hmm. So she's using existing photos and going, hey, you know, we could work on this for you. So yeah, no, great strategy, right? So you, you have this accumulation of photography and you can present it in a new way. I'll tell you one strategy that is real simple. Is, and I mentioned already, ask your customers, what do you need now? What's the new challenge? All right. So uh, here's an idea, and I don't know if this came from a client, but it's a great idea. Um, some photographers in her area are doing porch and yard sessions at a safe distance. Yeah. Very Smart. creative, right? Smart. You know, still photography is exploding right now. H how many masks are people taking pictures of? You look at Etsy and so forth huge amounts. A lot of businesses are moving to the product manufacturing, a product they've never manufactured before. So still photography, uh, get that product sh shipped to you and start you know, doing that type of photography. Reach out to those prospects. Okay. And I do have a question here. This is from earlier. So you had mentioned that photographers need to stay in touch with their clients. Yeah. So 
here's the, the question, which is, how do I apply this if I don't have a customer base yet? So how, how do you start maybe reaching out to new people or keeping your name out there, getting your name out there in a time like this? Yeah, yeah. So you have to define who you want that customer base to be, and then you go to their congregation points. So say I want to work with um, uh, small business owners and uh, I want to do uh, kind of still, still shots for their you know, for their business website or whatever. Well, where do small business owners congregate? And uh, well, they may ha have groups, actually I know a few, but there's business association groups. I would reach out to the association head and say, I'll do a free webinar just telling people how to do photography right now for themselves. Um, do educational events. The greatest way to get people's attention is through education. Education also translates to the know, like, and trust. They see you, they hear you, and they experience you. I'm doing an educational component. And for many people here, this may be the first time you've exposure to me. So it's a f way to get in front of people. You have the exact same opportunity. So you reach out to the congregation points. Another one is podcasts. You know, reach out to, po to podcasts and say, hey, I can do a, uh, a interview and explain how small business owners, if that's what your target is, on how they can present themselves. Um, and even take photography, current photography of themselves if they need to. Stuff like that. This is an educational opportunity to get in front of that market. Okay, next thing I want to show you um, is this thing called the Pareto Overlap. Um, the Pareto Overlap, again, you can go to recessionresponse.com if you want this. The Pareto Overlap is based upon the Pareto Principle. Pareto uh, was an economist from the 1800s studying this interesting dispersion of Italian wealth. But what matters is he came up with the 80-20 rule, that 20% of, in this case, Italian, the Italian population maintains 80% of the Italian wealth. Well, we found, he found that this dispersion, this 80-20 dispersion happens everywhere. So you'll find that a small portion, 20% of your clients, likely buy the majority of the services. There's certain clients that are your best clients. They buy from you repeatedly. Conversely, the lower 20, oh, this is the clients here, the lower 20, you have certain clients that are just horrible. They're, they're impossible to deal with. They don't pay you. They threaten you. They actually they make you do the work again and still don't pay you. And then we're going to go and yelp and slam you. And, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. So that's the dispersion of the 80-20. Now how I have it here is 20 and this is the 80 here or 20-60-20 is another way of pitching it. But the overlap is to realize that your products are, you know, the offering you have, your services, that a portion of it is the most profitable and there's a portion that is making no money at all and there's money stuff in the middle. Well, what we want to look at is the overlap. Look at your clients, your best clients that you love working with that make you a lot of money. This is a protection mode. You must do every, whatever it takes to communicate with them and to be of service to them and cater to them. The nice thing is this is a very small portion of your business, but it is the heart of your business. Losing customers in a recession that are here is a very painful loss. Conversely, there's a group down here. These are the horrible clients that are not making you money. And... Um, my friend calls these poison. The, the, those people that you just can't stand dealing with. This is actually your opportunity to jettison those customers because you are, if you continue to service them, they will distract you more. They're an emotional cost and they may even cost you money. And why, why should you be swallowing poison? In fact, just let them out in the market. <clears throat> let some other business pick them up. There's two other scenarios. Best clients buying your best, uh, or your worst products. This is an education opportunity. Reach out to those clients that you love working with, but they aren't making much money and say, hey, we have other offerings you may not know about. This may be of service to you. And you can elevate them up the chain to a better offering and be more profitable. Conversely, you may have bad clients buying great stuff. And um, that's a bad situation to be in because it's appealing financially, but this also means you'll work with anyone for money. So what we need to do in this situation is simply educate them on their behavior saying, I do want to serve you, but if you behave the way you are, I can't serve you. So you need to pay on time. You need to do this and do that or pay up front and see if you can elevate them up. If they're not willing to adjust, then these are customers you want to jettison to. So there's four quadrants you can analyze. And you can do that right now with your business. You can just look at your historical sales and you can analyze the four customer quadrants, protect the great ones, jettison the bad ones, and manage the ones in between. That's the Pareto overlap. Another tip I want to give you. It's called the 10 10 10 strategy. This is a real simple way. If you're feeling massive degrees of stress and overwhelm, first of all, it means you're human. Um, but if you make decisions that take you in the wrong direction, it puts you at risk. So there's a uh, there's a decision method you can make called the 10 10 10. 
This is not my strategy. This was developed by Susie Welsh. And it was, she's the former uh, wife of Jack Welsh. And this is what it, what it does. It's whatever you're considering. Say I'm considering buying new equipment right now or whatever the consideration is because equipment costs are coming down. Well, how will you feel about it in the next 10 minutes, 10 months, and 10 years? Most people don't focus on the 10 months and 10 years. We focus just on the immediate impact. So right now, if I buy some new equipment, I feel good. I'm excited about it. I can play around with it and get some new stuff going. But then consider in the next 10 months, how you'll feel about it. You know, quite frankly, I probably won't be using the equipment much. Uh, I don't really don't need new equipment now, so I don't know if there'll be any benefit. And in 10 years, um, that equipment will be right outside the window and probably I've never used it. So in the next 10 minutes, I feel great. But in the longer midterm and long term, I don't feel so good about it. Now I can reflect on the decision with thoughtful consideration over time and make a decision that's better for me. In this case, probably not buying the equipment. So use the 10, 10, 10 method for anything. Any consideration you have, you and you can do this in your head. You don't need a worksheet. Consider the impact in the next 10 minutes, but also the next 10 months and the next 10 years. Okay. A uh, couple more things I want to go into, Lee, and then we'll answer some questions. I, I want to share something from Fix This Next right there. The book is not that small. It's just in the background, so it's not that small. It's actually a full-size book. And uh, in there, I reveal this concept called the business hierarchy of needs. Um, you can take a screenshot of that. You can also get the same site that I've been talking about, Recession Response. And uh, what I discovered is there is a common DNA for all businesses. I was, I was looking at photographers. I was looking at pizza shops. I was looking at large accounting firms. I was looking at small manufacturers, everything you can think of. And I found there's a common DNA. There's a common thing we need to address uh, in every business in sequence, kind of like humanity. All of us, if you, if you peel back the skin, all of us are identical. Your heart and my heart's in the same spot. I don't have to go to a doctor if I'm having cardiac arrest and have the doctor say, oh, is your, is your heart in your foot? Like, where do you keep yours? It's always in the same spot. Well, businesses, when we peel back the skin of a business, photography or accounting or anything in between, the core essence is the same. Well, I deconstructed it into this business hierarchy of needs, and there's five levels, sales, profit, order, impact, and legacy. And I want to go through it rapid fire. Sales is the creation of cash. Here's what the lesson is. This is the foundational need of every business. If you have zero sales, you must get sales in. And now use some techniques to repackage your offering one step back, back, ask the customer and so forth. If you have some sales, the question is, is it adequate to support profit? So you have to consider profit. Now, interestingly, what I'm seeing with a lot of businesses right now is there's still some sales coming in. It's actually more of a profit concern for a lot of photography businesses. How do I cut some costs? Um, and maintain profit off the sales I do have. That may be the first consideration. Profit is the creation of stability. And uh, even if you went into to this uh, COVID situation with some profit, I'm sure it's given you some time for thoughtful consideration. If you haven't, there is an opportunity to grab profit now, slowly but surely. So as money comes in from sales, take a small percentage and hide it away from your business, one or 2%, just hide it away. The next level is called order. That's the creation of efficiency. Honestly, a lot of businesses have been thrust back down here. The needs have shifted, so most are down here. But order is where we ultimately remove the owner from doing the operation of the business itself. Impact is an interesting component because this is the creation of transformation. This is where we have, are of service beyond the transaction to your clients. Many businesses are actually trying to jump to impact right now and are skipping these foundational levels. So here's a key lesson I want you to take away is you have a responsibility to sell and to be profitable and to be efficient. You have to. You have to make money right now. If you try to give away your service, it's just a matter of time before it's not sustainable and you're done and you're permanently done, which is a shame because you're giving yourself away for a month or two and it's all over. How do you serve people by sustaining profitability? And I gave you a few tips. It's by repackaging your offering, asking them what they need, sp speaking in small bite-sized tangible components. So watch out for the illusion of serving the world without putting that oxygen mask on yourself first and suffocating yourself as a consequence. The highest level is called legacy. Legacy is the creation of permanence where your business is designed to live on in perpetuity. Okay, I, I do wanna ask you something, then we'll do some questions, and I got a couple more tips I wanna share, Lee. Um, I do wanna ask you something right now, uh, and it's to get a copy of Fix This Next. The reason I'm asking is, uh, of all the things I have to offer, it is the least expensive, most affordable, and highest impact thing I can do. So it's I think it's $25 on Amazon. Um, so I think, I know actually, it'll be of the greatest service to you because it 
I wrote this book to navigate crisis. Every step you need to take is in there. Uh, and that's why I'm so proud that it's coming out now. And it's a horrible situation for it to come out, but it's timed perfectly. So the reason I want you to get it now is because it'll serve you. And that's my promise. I also have a selfish interest that if you buy it now as we're talking uh, on Amazon and you pre-order it, because it's not going to be shipping for another week or so, but if you pre-order it now, what it does is it kicks on the Amazon engine. And when the Amazon engine kicks in, the automatic rhythm uh, algorithm, it starts promoting it to other entrepreneurs. If other business owners can find this, we can start turning this economy. And I know not one book will do it, but we need to get this optimistic and strategic, like what do we need to do uh, message out there. So small business, you are the backbone of our economy. It is crazy. The world proverbially just punched you in the face you have a bloody nose, a black eye, and as the world did it, it said, I need you in the worst way to save me. It's crazy and perverted, but that's the situation we're in. We as small business owners have to stand up, step forward, and start kicking some ass. And I want that for you. I need that for you in the worst way because we need it for you. I think Fix This Next may be an, a perfect tool for that, and it's the most affordable thing and the most impactful thing I can offer. So if you do decide to pre-order now, actually see Marnie did it, uh, just put it in the um, put it in the comments because I would love, thanks, Marnie. Uh, because I want to just thank you and acknowledge that. And I want to actually send you something too. Okay, let's just continue on with a couple more tips, Lee, and then we can do questions. All right, wait, I'm going to stop you before your yep. tips for just one second. So anybody who's watching right now, we have a boatload of people watching. If you if you can, right now while we're live, feel free to click share and it'll go live, or you can click and start a watch party. Um, that's another great way to get Mike's information out because even though we're live right now, as soon as we're done, you can go right back to the beginning. And I certainly suggest anybody joining us later on, you've missed a lot of stuff. So go back, watch from the beginning, click share, give it to your friends, um, or start a watch party. But let's get the word out to get people going again. Because as somebody mentioned earlier, there's a lot of anxiety right now. So yeah. thank you, Mike, for coming on and and giving us answers so we can start working on that anxiety. And like Mike said, we're going to be jumping on questions in a minute. So he's going to go through more tips, but start putting your questions there now. Uh, if you order the book, fix this next, put it there now, and we'll get to you in just a sec. And Kelly, thank you, Leticia, Erica. Thank you, everyone, for buying that book. It really does mean a lot to me, and I promise it will be of service to you. So thank you for doing that. Um, I want to give you, because a lot of people have been concerned about our emotional sense, and uh, I want to give you the thing called the positive process. Again, this is available to totally free at Recession Response. But basically, how do we start turning the mentality? I surveyed my readership um, six weeks ago, right when this is happening. I said, what do you need now most? And I thought it would be sales techniques or marketing. And the answer actually was confidence. So people's confidence clearly shaking, and that's normal. And I want to give you a method to navigate around that. Um, basically, it's a five-step process. Whatever you're feeling about the situation in a negative way, you write it down. So saying, like, I feel that my, you know, my business, I'm done. Uh, stick a fork in me, my business is over, and I've lost all my sales. Then write down uh, the consequences. Well, I'm going to lose my home. Write down all the potential consequences of that negative thought. That's step one. And interestingly, just allowing yourself the release of those emotions on paper, I found it to be the greatest form of therapy, and it's free. It's a great way just to get that feeling out. Step two, then, is write down what are the opportunities in the situation, something we don't often consider. Often our mind just starts spinning into the negative area. So we say, well, uh, business is over in the traditional sense, but now maybe I can focus on teaching lighting techniques, which I'm telling you is such a huge opportunity right now um, to light spaces properly and so forth. Um, you know, what's the other opportunity? I can do still photography. Right, just write down opportunity after opportunity that is potentially there. I'm not saying it's realistic, just potential. Then you move on to step three. Step three are ways to reduce the consequences. So we look back here and say, you know, I may lose my house. I may experience these other bad things. Well, what are ways I can do to reduce the consequence? Well, I can call my mortgage provider and tell my situation, is there any leniency right now? So we can start writing down potential actions that could serve us. Same thing, ways to maximize the opportunities. This is step four. Exact same thing, but on the opportunity side. What are ways to grab the opportunities to do these new services, like teaching people how to properly stage a setting for Zoom or to do lighting? Well, we already talked about it. You could do YouTube videos. You could email your existing list. You can go to the congregation points. So there's many ways to do it. Write those down. The last step then says small steps to increase opportunities. 
and then small steps to decrease consequences. Here are these final steps is what is the smallest bite-sized action you can take right now to start driving the result? Well, I can, um, you know, I can prepare my first video and maybe it'll take me all day, but I'll get one video done today explaining how to do lighting for a Zoom video or whatever it is. Um, and small steps to decrease consequences. You know, I can just write a letter to the mortgage company. I, I don't even feel comfortable picking up the phone right now. I'm so shaken. But at least I can write an email saying, can we talk? You write down the smallest actions. And as Martin Luther King said, you don't need to see the full staircase. Just take the first step in faith. When we take the first step, it starts moving the ball forward. So this is called the positive process. Um, another technique I want to share with you. Thank you, by the way, uh, Brenda, Diane, Leticia, Laura, Tracy, Everyone, Angela, Lisa, Becky, thank you for getting the book, the audiobook, uh, Alan. That really means a lot to me. It really gets the engine going. And I, I promise you, it'll be a great service to you. You will navigate through this. You've got this. You've got this. All right, block control, another technique you can use. Block control is where, very similar to the positive process, is a way to bring things down to bite-sized pieces. The reason for that shock experience is because of overwhelm. If you, if you feel overwhelmed, there's a way to control it. Write down what is overwhelming you. Like, you know, my business, um, I, I have to save my business and uh, everything's going out of control um, and, and the future looks bleak. That's what the forever situation feels like. But now start rewinding down to the next year. Say, what can I do in the next year to resolve this challenge that I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed about? Now, one year may be too big of a block. Then let's bring it down to a smaller block. Is there something you can do in the next month? Well, in the next month, maybe I can do X, Y, and Z. But maybe that feels overwhelming too, too big of a block. You keep rewinding. Maybe your block is one day. What can I do just from now till the end of the day to survive the day and get through it and move forward? Maybe that's the block you're working in. And honestly, some of us are working in an hour block or just in the moment. But instead of considering the long term, I got to accomplish this for the entire future of my business, let's break it down to a smaller and smaller and smaller block so it's manageable. All right, Lee, um, I know we're, we're approaching time here. Was there any more questions that came up? Um, otherwise, I can give you a couple more things. Okay, so at the moment, we don't have questions. I think you've been answering them right along. Um, again, just a reminder to everybody to share. And again, yes, you can go back to the beginning of this and, and watch the whole thing over again, which would be probably a brilliant thing to do. Um, the website that I've been putting up, uh, recessionresponse.com, all the stuff there, just you can just download it. Those are right. Those are all the sheets you've been showing, and a lot more. So you can start working just step by step and um, getting some help with this situation we're having. Great. And um, I see I, I'm getting a little delay on the feed here. Let me let me jump over. I'll put some questions up for you, and then uh, you can. Well, I got I got a couple more tips. tips. I can fire away. All right. Uh, well, I, let's. I just Acknowledge Carrie. Thank you for ordering the book. Barbara, Sophia, Carla, Yeti, Georgia, uh, All right. Sherry, Diane. It really means a lot to me, um, and I totally intend to be of service to you. Uh, it will serve you. I got well, a couple more we'll, tips. We'll leave. take a few more tips. All right. Okay. So next tip here is called the borrower lender matrix. It works around financials, but it works around any obligation. Here's how it works. On the right side here, it says obligation, um, sense of obligation. On this side. The horizontal axis is just time. And you can see the lender obligation increases and the borrower decreases. Here's the scenario. Say I borrow $100 from you. So you give me $100. I am the borrower. You're the lender. In the immediate time frame, I have a heightened sense of obligation. I, you know, Thank you so much. You give me $100. I need the money. Uh, I can do what I need to do now. Thank you. You as the borrower will feel a decreased sense of obligation saying, hey, it's not a problem. It's my joy. I'm happy it served you. But over time, my sense of obligation decreases. I'm like, oh, the 100 bucks, that was great, but I got other things. And over time, at a certain point, I'm like, you know, I, I don't even remember that. It was nothing. It was only 100 bucks. I got stuff to take care of. But the lender, you, your sense of obligation increases, saying, hey, um, I gave you 100 bucks. Why didn't you pay me back? It's been a few months now. What's going on? Pay me the money back. Well, the danger here is where it crosses over. When the borrower has a lower sense of obligation than the lender, you're, because you're the lender, are in trouble. That's the risk of giving terms to clients and payment plans. You'll notice that if you set up a payment plan, they're more likely to pay the earlier installments than they are the later installments because the lender obligation is increasing and the borrower obligation is decreasing. So your job is to keep the borrowers on this side. How do you do it? If anyone owes you money right now um, of any degree and are not paying it or not able to pay it, call them. And this is not a collections call. 
You simply call them and say, hey, we, we, you owe us some money. I know you're, you're not paying it. I want to see what you can afford reasonably. And that's the key. What can you reasonably afford? I had a client uh, that was owed $25,000. It was a major project. And the vendor, the uh, client of my client wasn't paying it. And they kept on calling and saying, you owe us $25,000. They said, we're so sorry. We know, but we can't pay it. It went on for a year plus, and they finally were going to give up. We tried this technique. What can you reasonably afford? We called them and said, hey, what can you reasonably afford on a weekly basis? And that's another key. If you make it more frequently, you're pushing the obligation back. They said, well, we don't know, which you'll hear too. We said, well, can you afford a penny? And they said, well, of course. We said, yeah, we assume so, but how about a dollar or 10 or 20? We found out it was $250 that they could afford weekly without having an impact on their business. We said, you know what? There's your new term. Give us 250 every Monday. And every Monday, once we receive the money, we'd call them the end day and say, hey, we received the money. Thank you. We'd have now communication reminding them of their obligation. The beautiful thing is they paid back that whole $25,000 uh, over the year because when they had extra money, they paid extra money back. What we did is we returned the sense of obligation to the borrower. That's what you need to do. If you have any money due to you, push the obligation back by having what can you afford conversations and doing it in small increments. The second thing is the heightened awareness. Now this isn't around money, but I told you to communicate in small bite-sized pieces. When you do that, you remind the prospective clients of your availability. Small, bite-sized, actionable pieces and increases the no like, and trust. Another technique, also at recessionresponse.com, we call it the 10-2 method. Works real simple. Uh, when you're feeling overwhelmed, just writing down your task list helps out a lot. So write down the 10 things you need to do for today. It says 10 for today, but also write down two things for tomorrow. And tomorrow stands for the future. So it's 10 for today, two for tomorrow. Many of us, we simply say, I gotta do this, I have to do that, and we're just tackling the day, and we're starting to spin in a circle. Every day seems like Groundhog's Day, it's a repeat. But if you simply start adding on the two things you need to do in, in looking into the future, then you'll start actually start managing actions or taking actions that start moving you forward uh, into the future. So it's called the 10-2 method. All right, um, let's see. Last thing I wanna share, Lee, and then we can wrap up on questions. Uh, thank you, I saw a couple more people buy the book. Diane, thank you so much. Um, that The book will serve you, that is my commitment, that's my promise to you, and uh, thank you for for helping support me. That means the world to me. Thank you. Um, the recession response is this rapid growth analysis is at recessionresponse.com. Here's the strategy. A real simple analysis on what to do in your business is this. In, these are the main categories of a business. We have marketing, uh, we have sales, we have products, we have services, we have operations. This is, if you're feeling overwhelmed, I saw a comment coming, this is a lot of stuff. I'm just sharing everything I got for you, but here's the one starting point for you, Valerie, and anyone else. If, if you're feeling overwhelmed, this is the one sheet I wanted to wrap up on because this is the one that'll serve you. Look at your historical marketing up to the point, particularly over the last six months, and ask yourself these questions. What is working and what is not working? So in your marketing, maybe what is not working is Facebook ads or uh, having a storefront presence uh, you know, that's not working, but you may have noticed that you did a uh, video that some people commented on. Um, write down these two things, and here's the solution. Whatever is working, you want to do more of, and whatever is not working, you want to diminish or reposition, change. And it's that simple. So go through this list, write for marketing what is working, what's not working, amplify what's working, diminish what's not working. You do this for your sales process. You know, I, you know, I'm trying to sell things at a $500 price point, it's not working. But um, to go through people's old photography or re-edit some old shots, um, that is working, um, then do more of that. Do it for your products, uh, if you have products, your services, and the operations of your business. And uh, this, if anything, is probably the most uh, simplified tool to get your business on the right track. I want you to remind you of the business curve. And uh, I know we raced through this, and we had a race through because because this is recorded. You can review it again and again. I want you to take away the pieces that work for you. The vast majority of this stuff is information that you don't need right now. Pick the ones that resonated with you and you feel and, and that you can take action on. Pick that one or two things and do those one or two things. But that's it. That's it. The rest will wait for you. I want to remind you that we're, this is the business crisis trend. And what we're doing now is I'm trying to push you and showing you tools to get you into the evaluation and deliberate action stage. If we can get out of shock and desperation and start working in this at, this area, 
you're going to start pushing yourself up to the burst moment or the surge moment. We're going to grab a uh, massive opportunity. I, I emphatically believe that the services you provide are life changing um, because it changed my life. Um, photography has been critical in getting myself out there in a new way, particularly in the digital age. There is so much online, including what we're doing now, that um, photography is the way to have a permanent 24 hour presence out there. It's one way, it's one powerful way. So you actually are needed more than ever now in my community, which is the small business community, and you're needed in so many other ways. The thing is, it's business as usual in unusual circumstances. Your usual core competency still needed, it just needed in a new package. That's the unusual part. So now you have the techniques, the one step back, ask your customers, the YouTube videos, uh, the 10, 10, 10. You have lots and lots of potential tools now you can use to deliver the critical services that you have. I'm wishing everyone here, every photographer, tremendous success. The economy needs your success. You need your success. Your family needs your success. And if we simply look forward and take deliberate actions one day at a time, we will march through this together and you will be successful and you will have a burst when you come out of this, a burst of opportunity. So thank you everyone for listening in. That was what yeah. I wanted to share, Lee. <laughs> and thanks so much for coming, Mike. I know you took time out of your day. I know you've got a My bolt joy. now and you've got another broadcast in like four minutes. I know, but I know. Thank you for being here. Everyone, you can rewatch this. Go check out Fix This Next. It's available on Amazon. It's going to help Thanks, you. Um, somebody mentioned about a link. I'll get that information to Mike's team. Um, anyway, thank you so much, Mike. I do. Thank you, Lee.